What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, and we're also going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 11th of January in 2019. But before we do talk about that, for all you new viewers out there watching, my name is Stas and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. So what went down today guys? It was pretty much a flat day in the markets at the close. We can see the S&P 500 literally closed the day down 38 cents, down about 0.01%. The Dow Jones closed the day down around $6, down around 0.02%, and the NASDAQ down around $10, down around 0.15%. So technically, guys, today was a red day, but it was a red day by a very, very, very slim margin, literally down like 0.01% in all the major indices. So let's take a look at the S&P 500. Guys, I'm going to give you all my two cents on what is going on here over the past couple of days and where I see, you know, the markets going potentially next week, as well as some important resistances and support levels that we have to keep an eye on for the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ. So here, guys, we can see. You know, like I've been talking about in all of these market update, trading update videos, the S&P 500 got absolutely slaughtered in December and pretty much after Christmas, I believe the 26th of December is where we bottomed out in all of the major indices. We've been seeing a lot of upwards push in the stock market. You know, we had that Fed meeting, I believe a week or two ago, and you know, the Fed was saying how they're going to relax on raising interest rates in the year of 2019. We saw Trump tweeting out that, you know, there's trade negotiations with China are going very well. We've just been getting a lot of optimism really since this big, big crash, or not really crash, but sell off that we've been experiencing, you know, in the month of December. So in my opinion, guys, Right now, this is what's pushing up the market, right? This optimism, the Fed, you know, Trump negotiations with China, he tw him tweeting that they're going well. You know, there's a lot of optimism right now, you know, in my personal opinion. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this. But, you know, like I've been saying over the past couple of videos, and I'm still sticking by my word, I still think the markets are going to sell off one of these trading days. I thought it was going to happen today, guys, because, you know, Fridays are usually days where the market does sell off. Am I saying does it sells off every single Friday? Absolutely not, guys. But, you know, a lot of the times on Fridays, we do see a pretty decent sell-off, you know, in the overall stock market. And today, guys, I thought this was going to happen due to this nice gap down that we had from the close yesterday in the S&P 500, you know, where it closed roughly at about $2,600. We gapped down today all the way down to around $2,585, sold off to around $2,577. And at this point, I believe the S&P was down about 1% from yesterday yesterday's close down around 0.75%, but we found, you know, the double bottom here on the S&P, you know, a doubled bottom, that's actually a very terrible drawing, <laughs> you know, but it double bottomed, you know, right around here, I think this was, what was this, like 10.30 a.m., 11 a.m., it double bottomed, right, bottom, bottom, and then it started to make some higher highs, higher lows, and for the rest of the day, we were on this upwards, uh, you know, trending pattern trajectory, right? We were uptrending, making higher highs, higher lows, and we pretty much closed the day 
at the close of yesterday. So, you know, what this is telling me, guys, and if we take a look a little bit further on this, um, you know, S&P 500 chart, if we look at the 10-day, 30-minute, what I see here is very interesting, right? We can see this pattern that happened today kind of has been happening over the past couple of days. Let me explain very quickly. I'm going to remove all of these drawings because this is giving me a headache just looking at all these red lines. It's very, very sloppy right now, but let me just quickly do this very, very quickly for you all. So what I was talking about in terms of the same pattern is take a look at this, guys. You know, this day right here, you know, we closed the day at around 2585, let's say. We gapped down to 2565, then we ended up closing the day right around where we closed the day previously. And then we saw the same exact thing happen today. We gapped down in the morning, ended up closing the day right around the same point where we closed the day yesterday. So what this is telling me, guys, is that there is a pretty strong resistance on the S&P 500 right around that $2,600 level. And this kind of makes sense, guys, because if we're judging on the 180 chart here, let's take a look at what this is looking like. If we're judging on this chart, you know, there is a pretty strong uh, resistance on the S&P at around 26 25 and this is a resistance point because it was once a support towards the end of October towards the middle of November and in December but obviously once we broke that support it became a new resistance so if we're judging off this 180 chart guys obviously the clear support here is at the you know 26 25 level or the clear resistance rather is at 26 25 and that's what I'm going to be taking a look at very closely but you know I find it interesting that you know over these past three days the S&P has been pretty flat guys you know this is telling me one of two things either we're supporting here you know we're finding support here to push to the upside or we're going to fall down here you know this week because what we're seeing you know on this five minute chart here five day five minute is the 180 SMA is kind of flattening out. It doesn't have that upwards trajectory like it did these past couple of days. You know, what was this? Like the 4th of January, about a week ago, right? We can see the upwards trajectory of the uh, 50 and the 180 SMA. They're slowly starting to flatten out, right? They're slowly starting to flatten out. So this could be just a level of support before the next push up. Or, you know, if this does get rejected, this could be the leveling out point, you know, before. Or, you know, dumping down maybe back into, you know, the mid 2500 level, 2500 level, or back into the $2,400 level. So, you know, the S&P, guys, it's performing, you know, kind of interestingly. It's, it's in a weird spot right now, like it has been over these past couple trading days, like I've been mentioning, you know, in all of these videos. And if we're judging on this three-year chart, guys, you know, a very good sign that I do see is that the S&P held the 180 SMA on the three-year chart. And if you guys have been watching my videos, if you guys have been watching them for the past couple of weeks, I think a trading update, uh, I believe back in December, I was talking about this level being a strong support. Let me know if you guys remember this. I'm sure you guys remember this if you watch the trading update, market update videos, but this level here has been a support due to it bouncing at 1810 here back in 2016. And obviously the big sell-off that we saw from the peak in October brought us all the way down to this level and we bounced beautifully with three strong candlesticks pointing up. So, you know, in terms of this longer term chart, guys, you know, there's also another resistance point on, you know, right at around $2,600 from the sell-off that we saw earlier on in 2018, which is why we could also be, you know, consolidating at the level that we are right now, like we saw on those smaller frame charts. So, very interesting spot right now, guys. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this. And even though we're judging this off of a longer-term chart here on the 20-year, I believe, three-month chart, right? Right, or maybe one month chart, it's also holding the 50 SMA support, you know, on this level right here on this very longer term chart. So, you know, 
if we're just judging off the technicals and taking off all of the fundamentals off the table, let's say, you know, let's pretend the stock market was strictly technicals, you can make an argument right now that the S&P 500 is continuing the bull run that it's been on since 2008, right? Because we see a very strong green candlestick start to form. We held some very strong, um, you know, support levels, you know, on the 20 year chart, on the three year chart, we held a very strong one, right? And, you know, one can make an argument that we are continuing the uptrending pattern if all of the fundamentals are wiped aside, right? Meaning, you know, we're disregarding the, the economic situation that we're in, the trade war, the Fed. We're wiping all that off the table. And if we're just simply judging off the technicals, guys, you know, you can make a pretty good argument, you know, in my opinion, that the S&P is, is, you know, recovering on these longer term charts. But then once you get to the 180 chart, there are still some resistances that we have to break out of before we are in that full fledged uptrend pattern. And what I think is the next resistance, obviously these ones that we talked about. And then of course the 180 SMA, which would be the next resistance if we do break out of there. So keep an eye on those levels, guys. Same exact thing with the Dow Jones. Let me just quickly clear this drawing set it's looking very very sloppy but over the past couple of days guys very similar movement right it's been extremely flat over the past three trading days we've been gapping down right you know from the previous close for example here at about 23 800 we gapped down ended up closing the day right right around you know the previous day's resistance gap down ended up closing the day right around the previous day's resistance so it's kind of a pattern right now over these past couple of days in terms of these major indices and they're having trouble breaking these levels that i have drawn out here so let's take another look back out here to the 180 uh sma or rather the 180 chart here and, you know, the previous, uh, you know, support for the Dow was right around, let's say, 24,000 flat. And this is from the sell-off that we saw, um, you know, back in June 2018. Obviously, we broke that, making a making it a new resistance point. So 24K, guys, that's where we're seeing the resistance right now. And obviously, we saw on the smaller frame charts, we're having trouble breaking that 24K level. So this is telling me one of two things, right? Same exact thing as the S&P 500. Are we leveling out here to, you know, drop to the downside or are we leveling out here to push up into upwards momentum, um, you know, to continue the uptrend pattern that we've been on since this crash or the big sell-off that we saw in December? Again, drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think is going on right now. So, the NASDAQ is having some very strong resistance as well at the top of this downwards trending channel. And we can't deny, guys, that the NASDAQ is still in the downwards trending pattern right now, making lower highs, making, uh, what's it called, lower lows, right? It made a lower low, lower low, lower low, lower low. And this is still technically a lower high from the previous and that's why in my opinion we're seeing some very strong resistance um right around here but the interesting thing is that we're holding the 180 sma um as a support level right now you know for the nasdaq composite so what this is telling me guys is that same exact thing with the S&P, same exact thing with the Dow. If we hold this and start to push out of this channel, that's going to be a good reversal pattern to the upside. But if we do end up getting rejected hard here and breaking under the 180 SMA, that's going to be a huge sign that we're heading back to the downside. But just, you know, if we do break under the 180 SMA here on the NASDAQ, that doesn't mean that we're breaking the up trend pattern because the 50 SMA has been acting as a support so we would have to break below the 180 and the 50 and then ultimately uh, the the 63 40 level right around here which is the previous um you know resistance which is now a support for the Nasdaq we would have to break that as well for this one to be heading back into the downwards direction. So in terms of these past couple of trading days, guys, the NASDAQ is still in an uptrend pattern. The Dow Jones is still in an uptrend pattern, right? And the S&P 500 is still in an uptrending 
pattern. So let's talk about you know, what I did today in terms of my trading. And honestly, guys, I didn't trade in the beginning of the day. And I was talking about in the group chat today how, you know, Fridays are typically slower days for me. And the way it was going early on in the day, it was looking like, you know, from my trading perspective, that I wasn't going to trade today because I wasn't seeing any movement. Like we saw, the markets were pretty flat. You know, the gold futures that I was watching very close yesterday they didn't really do much today so I didn't want to trade JNUG you know or JDST but later on in the day is when we actually got a huge push in natural gas guys and remember in yesterday's video I was covering natural gas very closely and we got that pop that we wanted to in natural gas guys nearly a 20 point pop in natural gas up 6% on the day. And remember, the ETFs that we trade that are based on natural gas, they are 3x leveraged ETFs, meaning that they move three times as fast as the underlying asset, which in this case is natural gas, right? So, you know, what I traded, I'm sure you guys can guess it, was you guys. Later on in the day today is when natural gas made that crazy run and we can see it was up 6% like I said meaning that you guys probably closed the day up around 18 19 20 percent and we could take a look at that very quickly um to see that you know it closed the day up 15 percent like i said guys they don't always correlate 100 percent exactly like three times what the underlying asset did but it's always in the same ballpark right 15 percent is not exactly you know it should be 18 percent um, you know, if it was exactly three times the 6% gain that natural gas did have. But again, guys, they don't exactly correlate. Um, you know, that's just how the ETFs, inverse ETFs work. But let's just take a look back at natural gas very quickly so we can see when it made this really big move. So, you know, we can see exactly what I'm talking about here. So this was the morning time. I wasn't trading at this point, but once we started to see the push, it was right around noon. Eastern Standard Time with about four hours left in the market. So it was already halfway done the trading day when natural gas made this ridiculous push. And a bunch of people in our Discord group chat were able to capitalize on you guys. So if you were able to trade you guys, congrats. You probably made a killing today. And uh, let me know down below in the comment section what you ended up doing in terms of you guys. Are you holding it over the weekend? Did you trade it today? Did you profit today? Did you not trade it today? What are you guys doing? What did you guys do in terms of you guys? Let me know down below. But we see, you know, at 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is when we start to get on this higher low, higher high pattern. And around 2.30 is when we saw a ridiculous push very quickly from about 3.10 all the way up to 3.16 in the matter of about one hour. And I actually got into uh, you guys right around here, I believe it was around like 1.30 to 2 o'clock when natural gas was at around 307 to 308 and if we take a look back why I was seeing potential in natural gas in the first place and what I talked about in yesterday's video was if it was able to break out of this 50 SMA resistance right I was thinking that it can run because we've been seeing some crazy consolidation on the 290 to $3 support from back in uh what was this in in middle September roughly right and we were seeing a couple of days worth of consolidation, literally from the end of December all the way till now, pretty much today, we were consolidating on natural gas at the support. So once we broke that 50 SMA, guys, we pretty much spiked like a rocket. So I made around 4% today on you guys. It was a pretty solid day uh, for me. If we take a look back on the one day, one minute, like I said, I got in at around 1.32 o'clock. My average position was at around, I believe, like 43.55, I believe, right around here. You know, let's see, 43.55. Yep, right around here. And I ended up riding it up 4%, guys. Literally, I sold off at about 45.33. Very quick, 4% 
in and out trade, and I pretty much traded it, guys, because again, natural gas was uptrending, making higher highs, making higher lows. You guys was riding this 50 SMA very nicely, and the momentum was just pushing upwards, right? And this was pretty much a momentum trade in you guys got in very quickly literally got out within about like an hour uh you know about an hour or two actually no it was about an hour um you know in you guys took the four percent and pretty much closed off the trading day up four percent and that was it for the day guys so you know let me know what you guys did today down below very interesting day today in terms of the uh, natural gas ETFs very very solid day um crude oil today actually dropped very quickly if you guys were watching crude oil today this one actually dipped pretty quickly which was expected guys because crude oil was extremely extremely overbought so I wasn't really surprised about this we hit actually $53 today at around 1 a.m what was this like 5 1 to what was this like 5 a.m eastern standard time we hit around $53 then we ended up selling off pretty quickly down to $51 so technically guys crude oil is still on an uptrending pattern so you know, if anything, guys, if it holds this trend that I just drew, this could be a good entry point um, for UWT. Could be a very good entry point for that one. So let me know what do you guys think about uh, crude oil UWT. I think it's in a very interesting spot right now. And I want to talk about um, Cron as well. I was talking about this one in the Discord group chat today, potentially playing a put option on Cron with an expiration date out around, you know, maybe two, three weeks from now. And let me explain this very quickly before we do um, close off today's video. So what a put option is pretty much for those of you guys that don't know is it's like you're shorting a stock, right? You're short a stock. You think it's going to go down in the near future, in the long-term future. Really, you can make whatever expiration date you want. They're usually three times a week, right? Sometimes you can only do them once a week. It really just depends on, uh, you know, what stock you're picking. But I believe Cron, I checked the put options on Cron today. I do believe this one's twice, three times a week. I forget, to be honest with you guys. But that's besides the point. What I see in Cron here, guys, is a strong resistance at around $13.50 to $14. And we've seen it get topped off here, you know, once, twice, three times, you know, four times, five times. And we're seeing, you know, a potential resistance spot and a top off right now, you know, on Cron at around $13.75 to $14, right? So this is really opening my eyes to a potential put again two to three weeks out from right now would be the expiration date, in my opinion, maybe even a month out, because let's take a look at that. So we see, you know, every time it hit around $14, $13, $14, let's see how long it took to fall down to pretty much to sell off before the next spike up. So we see 1380 here. What date was this? 920. It sold off all the way down to about 1010. So 920 to about 1010. That's about three weeks, right? September uh, 20th to about October 10th. That's about three weeks. So if you were to put, let's say, a three week uh, put option on Cron right around here, you would have done very well depending on what the strike price was, right? And if you were to do it here, let's see, from $13 on the 16th of October down to around $6. Well, this is a different example, but um, you know, this one, how long did it take it to drop? This one is about two weeks. So this is what's giving me, you know, the, uh, the idea of doing around a two to three week put option because based off the history, guys, that's what it took to drop Cron from uh, the peaks. And, you know, remember, guys, previous price action doesn't, you know, doesn't indicate future price action, which is why you always have to approach, you know, call call options, put options, and even trading stocks, you know, outright with caution, right? So, you know, that's my thoughts on Cron. What do you guys think about this? You know, I called this one out a couple of weeks ago on this little cup pattern. 
We ended up doing what I thought it was going to do. Now I'm interested in playing, you know, the downside on Kron. Let me know what you guys think about this down below. I would love to know. So that's it for today's video, guys. I'm going to wrap it up right here. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. And oh crap, I forgot. Yesterday's video, I asked you guys, to challenge you guys to get that video to 50 likes, and you guys blew it out of the water. I think that video got like 75 likes, man. That was absolutely crazy. It honestly blew my mind, and I really thank you guys if you did like yesterday's video, and smash a like on this video. Why not, guys? If you're here still, smash that like button, and uh, you know, subscribe if you're new. Drop a comment, and uh, again, I appreciate all you guys for watching, all the love that I've been getting in the Discord, on YouTube, YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook. I really appreciate all you guys to the fullest. So I'll catch you in the next video. I'm uploading a video tomorrow on three ways to invest $100 in 2019. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.